Well, hello, Bob Dendry here and welcome back to the channel. We are here today playing Transport Fever 2 again. We are building Brit Rail and um, we made some good progress last week making up a, uh, a nice little supply chain for our HQ over in Longridge. It's Wednesday. Hope you're having a good week so far and hopefully we're going to have a good episode today. Now, we've got two main focuses that I'm looking at us um, focusing on today. That is setting up the first of... Uh, sort of public transport network which will serve probably the towns of Birmingham, Chester, Longridge and Hendon and as well as that we want to keep um, going with our sort of current focus of building up the capacity on our existing goods network to increase our profitability as well. So let's get started. So our probably what will be sort of the main terminus will actually be in Birmingham, um, even though we're going to have our HQ over in Longridge. That's because Birmingham sort of has the capacity to sort of go out in a number of different ways. We can go out towards Litchfield, go down through Chester, you know, towards sort of Ivy Bridge, as well as just follow this route that we're going to be working on today. So we'll get started on that. Obviously, Long Ridge will also probably be a, ma a major sort of um, junction type station, but Birmingham is where we're going to start the majority of our work right now. And let's have a look. It looks like the residential appears to be on, on this side here, which should make it a little bit easier for us to get a decent station down. But let's have a look and see. Yes, perfect. So that, that's good. Now I'm just going to have a look through some of our assets and we can maybe get something interesting down as well. So I've got this here. Um, this. So I've got this um, UK generic station, which yeah, I don't know. Is that different to the basic one? different furniture and stuff. Okay, fair enough. So I'm, I'm thinking probably we're going to try and get this station in over here. Uh, we will need to slightly reconfigure the road network, but that is okay. And we'll have some, I, I guess, some capacity to build a bit of a public transport network here as well. So I'm going to start by cutting off this road here. That's fine. We will... Uh, be fixing that as we go. Don't know if you just heard that very loud motorcycle that just went past my house, but uh, interesting. So we'll make it a, we'll start with probably four platform building size, hey? What does that do? Oh, okay. So we can build a massive building or just a little small one. Town's already building their road network pack. They're not happy about it. <laughs> so we might just quickly pause, stop them from doing that. Okay, that looks nice. All right, we'll get some roads rebuilt. Keep the uh, keep the town nice and happy. <laughs> uh, but we don't have money. That was a very expensive construction, so we might have to press play again and wait for some cash to come in. <laughs> okay. So we've got the cash now. And I wonder if we could build a little sort of U-shaped bridge over the top here. I know, I know I've tried to do that in a previous build and it didn't turn out that great. Oh, 
I think that should be okay. Just need to wait for a little bit more cash to come in. All right, so we've got some cash in hand. So we're going to keep working on the station. Hmm. Interesting. So it does need to go a little bit higher. is happening here <laughs> what is that <laughs> that's not great okay we're gonna have to come back to that later because yeah that's uh it's not too nice is it but oh well we've got beginning of a little uh crossover area for our uh, for our road to cross over the rail that's good also unlocked <laughs> a lot of more vehicles that we can use, which is also excellent. Always good to see that. And um, hopefully we should be on our way not too long. So let's see if we can get these through. Oh, that is shiny, shiny. Perfect. Nice. Okay, that looks quite good. Oh, hello. <laughs> what are you? What? What is that? It's a, a fox? Doesn't look like a fox. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be using probably just one pair at the moment, um, which will be dropping down to a single track in line with the rest of our network. Um, and what I'm thinking we're going to do is have it cross over and join up with our existing main line uh, just past the depot here, most likely. In fact, what we might do, in fact, is have a, a, uh, a track going into the depot um, and the other track will sort of bypass it and come out on this side here. It should be reasonably neat. And... Um, should allow us to hopefully, um, with not too much effort, get some services underway here. Perfect, so that's actually all we need to do there. And now we just need to find where we're gonna be best place our train station in Chester. And it looks like our residential is mostly on this side as well. So it's nice and convenient to uh, our existing track, which is once again, fantastic news. I'm gonna go with two tracks at the moment. Gonna be a nice, reasonably small one. And we hopefully should be able to just slot it in. Here. So we only need to remove two buildings, better than nothing. And I think we'll just slightly realign our lines so that the freight line comes just past, straight past our station. And then we can easily sort of drop the uh, uh, passenger services into the station. And we've already got some rebuilding happening, so that's good to see as well. Nice, resilient community. Okay, so let's get reorganizing. Hopefully I have enough money to rebuild this. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, easy peasy.
perfect. I was actually a little bit nervous for a second there that I might not have the cash. <laughs> but uh, it, it was fine. It was okay. Okay. Construction not possible, hey? I just want a nice straight. Not like that. <laughs> what is this? Okay. It's interesting. Basically, I just want a nice straight track that we can use to bypass the station in need. But we don't really have even have that many passenger um, services right now, so I think it's fine just to leave it just like this. Okay, and the last station that we're going to build right now, um, before we actually start actually saving money and getting services up and running, is our station in Longridge. Yeah, Longridge is a little bit more interesting because we've got a few lines already sort of running through the place. Um, but I think we should be okay. This one will be uh, four as well. We might do a, a different... Um, design on it just because why not um, and I think we can probably get pretty good coverage hmm this is actually gonna be tough I think we'll be all right putting it around here or so but we will need to definitely introduce some public transport um, we do have an easy connection we can make here that will increase um, the coverage of the station so I'm not too worried about that once we can afford it <laughs> but um, we will need to definitely get some coverage to cover sort of the houses over here and that sort of thing but we're pretty good we've got some space here that we can build our HQ as well which is excellent because right? HQ is you know pretty much the most important thing for us to build at this you know point in time because um, I need somewhere to be sitting putting up my feet as I do but um yeah should be good. Okay, so let's get that placed down there. Excellent. We've got a little bit more coverage, but not too much. Um, so we will need to, yeah, get some transport happening. Maybe some trams once or if they're available. And other thing we need to do is to build our headquarters. And there we go. Perfect. It's not called Bob Dendry Transport though. Called Red Rail. Excellent. So once we've joined this uh, station up to our line, we are pretty much good to go with getting some passenger services in. So I think we'll need another passing loop in, in this sort of section past uh, Chester, but we shouldn't require too much work to get everything working. Only thing we need to worry about is crossing this line here. So I'm not sure if we might want to build a little bridge or something like that. And it was actually pretty easy to get the bridge built. So I'm wondering what what this yellowness is. Can I place that and will it look terrible? Uh, can place it and it does look terrible. Okay. Is that like a planning bridge or something?
that'll do. Got a few like little weeds growing through. I oh, don't no, never mind their trees. Ah <laughs> uh, well. You live and you learn, am I right? Perfect. Okay, so the connection's done. Just going to get a passing loop slotted in over here. Get that all signalized. Perfect, so infrastructure looks to be all done now. Um, so once we've got probably a couple more loads of uh, timber over to our tool factory, we should pretty much be in a good position to purchase and get our first train running. But let's have a look at the depot and see what we've got available to purchase at the moment. Um, once again, just a disclaimer that I know nothing about British Railway. I'm just doing this because it looks cool. Uh, hopefully there's some, some sort of fluff stuff here that we can use to work out what we need to be running for passenger. <laughs> Let's have a look. But I'd love to get something that's... Uh, um, you know, like a... Um, coloured um, passenger locomotive versus just a boring old black or metal colored one. So the A1, I, I'm definitely assuming that this is passenger. And let's have a look and see what we can get built. And the money's coming in, so let's go before we go back into debt again. <laughs> um, so let's get a quick line set up. We're actually going to call this the head and branch, even though it doesn't go to head and yet. And that's just so I can keep track of it later when I probably forget to rename it. And as you can see, we're back in the red, as was expected. <laughs> so let's get that one going. And excellent. We have a passenger train. It's not a very long one. Lovely. So that was our first objective for this week. And from here, we're pretty much going to be spending our money as it comes in on getting some um, basically just extra carriages on our freight trains. And I think especially the timber train, because that is going to be our most profitable at this point. Um, and that will help us to start to build up more profits. So we can keep expanding quicker moving forward. OK, so I've realized I've made a mistake. And, and I'm I'm brave enough to admit it. <laughs> I have built out this passenger line too quickly. I, I actually don't have the um, infrastructure. I don't have the profitability of my industrial um, and freight networks to actually support this in the sort of growth phase. So I'm hemorrhaging money right now. So look, as a result, what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to sell this train. <laughs> That will get us some cash back and they'll allow us to 
increase the capacity for our our freight uses and that will obviously increase our profits and then we can potentially down the line move back and um, put a, a passenger line into place following that so that's a bit sad but um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the rest of this episode just doing the utmost I can to really increase that capacity so that we are hopefully swimming in money and not too long <laughs> But we have um, unlocked some bogey uh, or some bolster wagons. Um, so we are going to be using those. Oh, that's interesting. Actually, no, I just added that on. That's okay. <laughs> We're going to be using those with our trains. So they're going to be mixed trains, um, which might add a little bit of visual interest there. Um, but that will also allow us to increase the capacity a little bit as well. So we'll see how much we can get on um, with our next... Um, uh, our next delivery uh, I would expect we can probably get 1.3 mil maybe one more we can spend on this this is our uh, log strain coming from Chester by the way so let's have a look and see how it turns out yeah beautiful um, can we get another one on there no we can't let's get that upgraded um, so hopefully we'll start to see the uh, the fruits of our labor in not too long Okay, and our newly upgraded log train is coming into the station. Uh, we were pulling around about, I think, 750k um, with each load previous to the upgrade. So hopefully we more or less double that, if not a little bit better. Um, but we'll see what happens when we, uh, when we pull in. Okay, 1.2, that, that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so once that starts, you know, going through and um, delivering. Hopefully we'll start to build up a little bit of cash. Uh, the timber train, I do want to add at least double the capacity of that. We have the manufacturing capacity to support it and that will that will be a really big money maker. So that is going to be the next goal. Okay, we are starting to build up a little bit of profit here. Um, our timber train is not far away from the station at uh, our tool factory either. So uh, essentially once that pulls in, I think we're going to upgrade the train at that point. It's actually losing money at the moment. Oh, just because it's uh, reasonably early in the year. That's fine. So let's uh, do some editing of this train. We should have a fair bit of money to play with as well. 1.9 mil, nice. So let's get... Oops, I've um, just been sitting here wasting some time. <laughs> so I think we're gonna aim for this sort of increase. So it should be quite good in terms of capacity then, hopefully. Um, I'm hoping we'll get another delivery soon so we can uh, purchase this amount of carriages and hopefully yeah we should start getting up towards sort of the two million or so um, which should really help us out to get that uh, passenger line back in operation because the people aren't happy about it i can tell you that much we have protesters at our headquarters every single day All right, so I managed to get on actually an extra carriage. Uh, once again, we are in debt, but I'm pretty used to that at this point. But as you can see, we've got quite a long train now. So hopefully, hopefully this will be good for us. We still have plenty of capacity to expand. In fact, we've still got 165 logs sitting there. Okay, small network change I want to make. Um, I've noticed the sort of wait time when you've got a station sitting here in Birmingham for a train to come up from this passing loop is putting a real handbrake on productivity. 
what I'm going to do is we're going to add a further passing loop in sort of in this area here. Um, I think it makes sense being that there's also possibly going to be conflicts with uh, the Birmingham passenger station once that's back up and running. And I think it'll be a fairly simple change we can make, which hopefully should increase our train throughput, which will once again allow us to uh, profit a little bit more as well. So hopefully that should help us out a little bit here. Um, we do have quite a bit of money in the kitty now as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is hopefully get this un upgraded to the maximum length we can have it. And um, from there we should be pretty much good to go. So 240 is the longest we can have it uh, based on our current infrastructure. So 237, nice. So we'll really be optimizing the sort of profit we can make on that one now. And for our uh, log train, we want to upgrade that one as well, but we probably will need to wait a little bit longer for us to get that like completely finished up. Let's have a look. So yeah, so we've still got a fair way to go with this one. But hopefully we should be able to get pretty close to, to getting it up to 170 meters in not too long. Three point three mil, that is beautiful. That's what we need. Okay, so we've got enough money now to finish uh, extending our Chester log train. So I'm gonna quickly hopefully get in and do that before it loads at its station. Oh, we just, just short. Okay, we'll do what we can. <laughs> um, so we're almost there, almost there. But once again, there's still more than enough capacity to to be handling the longer train lengths. So we could in fact even make the platforms longer. Perfect. So now we can finish the train. <laughs> okay, and we should only need, I think two more wagons for it to be up 231. Can we get another one in? 242, I'll allow it. I'll allow it, but we're actually, we're just short. Oh. It's frustrating when you're, when you're like penny pinching. <laughs> as soon as the, uh, as soon as the money come in, comes in, you know, it's out for, um, for upkeep and stuff like that which sometimes makes it a little bit tough in this early stage of the game, at least for me, because I like to keep building stuff. I don't really like just leaving the game running and waiting for a uh, profit to build up, as I'm sure you've seen throughout the first two episodes of this series. But yeah, look, look at that. We're already in the negative again. And it, I guess it just goes to show that we need to have that consistent money coming in to, um, to cover our operating costs. But we've got our timber train going off again. That will give us another 2.5 maybe. Um, and we've also should have the logs pretty much coming back now. So we're we're at the end. <laughs> we, we can do it, I promise. Okay, this load here should hopefully do it. And we also have the timber, which will be arriving very shortly as well. So this should be enough. So logs have unloaded and 
timber is just coming into the station now. And there we go. Perfect. So that's all we need to do at this point. Uh, these sort of um, four trains are now pretty much as optimized as they're going to get. So if we let this run for maybe a year or two, we should hopefully get up, you know, a decent amount of money up towards or above 10 million, which will allow us to get our passenger line back into service in hopefully not too long. All right, so I think I am going to make one further change before we finish off this episode. And that is one just based on supply and demand, I guess. <laughs> so looking at our um, station here at Birmingham, we still got way more timber than we know what to do with, right? So what I'm potentially thinking we could do is actually add a second train onto our timber line. And we'd need to sort of change up how we do things a little bit. So the I think one of the suckiest things about Transport Fever 2, which is probably a small gripe, is that trains on a line will only use a single platform, which for passenger trains, I guess that sort of makes a little bit of sense. But at the same time, you know, trains on the same line will sometimes use different uh, platforms if there's operational difficulties or whatever. But with freight, obviously, they I think they should just use whatever platform's available, pretty much. But what we're going to do, we're going to use a little overflow um, sort of track where the extra train we're running can sort of wait for the platform to be free if it needs to be. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, once again, I'm just going to start with what we can afford and we can um, continue to add on to this one. I believe it probably will queue a little bit and I think we probably don't have quite the production to completely cover um, everything, but I think it'll be nice um, for us to, to be able to take advantage of the extra timber that's sitting here. So I'm gonna get a train put together now. I'm thinking we'll probably use um, a special goods uh, now. I also know that all these trains wouldn't have run together, right? Obviously, they're different railways, stuff like that. I know that, <laughs> so please don't leave me any comments saying that. I'm, I'm just going with what's cool and what fits in, or what looks cool and what sort of fits in from a, uh, a gameplay point of view. So that's the reason why I'm doing that. But I think we're going to run with one of these. Uh, probably not reversed, though. It says, okay, I guess we are gonna run it reversed because that's what's available to us. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Um, and we're just gonna get some um, flat cars on here once again. I think we just unlocked some new ones. Where are they? Maybe we didn't, maybe I imagine that. That was that one there, I think. Now this small capacity, but they're faster. I think we're gonna go with the capacity for this one. And we're just gonna get whatever we can afford. Turns out we can afford a fair bit, actually. And just chuck a brake ban on as well. And we just dipped below what we can afford. So we'll just pull that one off, that's fine. Buy that and we will send it onto our timber line. All right, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna build a, a little sort of queuing um, track here that we can use. Which of, of course we'll build once we have the money. 
Now, this track I want to be only for our timber trains. I don't want the, the log train to use it. So I'm going to can try and connect it directly to the platform like so. Oh, I just broke that train. <laughs> oh no. Okay, it's alright. <laughs> Beautiful. I think that should be long enough. Mm, yes, I think it'll be long enough. to be one way. Okay, so basically what we want to have happen here is if you are um, a timber train, you want to use this track here to the left and wait. And if you're a log train, you'll just follow the existing track. And if you're a timber train coming back out, you'll also use that existing track. So this is basically just going to be sort of an overflow. So if our trains are having to wait to load, they're not holding up the delivery of goods, which of course would pretty much stuff the entire um, entire supply chain up. So I'm going to see if I can get a waypoint down. And we've got a few different waypoints, don't we? I'm going to use this one, I think, which is a, a distance signal, which I think actually makes sense. Because um, basically that is just going to be telling the, the train what the next signal is displaying. Is how distant signals work, I believe. Don't quote me on that though. So we should now be able to get our uh, timber line. And after it goes to Long Ridge, we'll add that waypoint. Oh, you can actually use signals as waypoints. That's interesting, I didn't realize that. But yeah, that's set up now, so that should be nice and easy uh, for us to, to sort of take advantage now of the extra uh, production we have here. Also, before I forget, I'm pretty sure in the next major update they're doing on this game, they are actually going to allow um, trains to use different platforms if they're on the same line. I'm pretty sure I read that, but so if, if um, that's the case, great. And, but I do hope it's sort of customizable. I, I do like, don't get me wrong, I actually do like that you can assign different platforms to different lines, but hopefully it's something like where you could say, you know, line one can use platform one and two and line two can use platform three or four or something like that. So that you can sort of still remain uh, a little bit separated while um, still allowing some sharing of, of the assets for the network. It looks like here as well, we could probably increase the length of our tool train a little bit as well, which I'm, I'm actually surprised I wasn't expecting to even need to do that. Um, but 30 is probably not quite enough. In fact, we've still got over 30 waiting there. So we might double the length of this train. Um, it has only really come into profitability once we've sort of boosted the, um, the input coming into the tool factory here. So hopefully we can sort of take a little bit more advantage of that as well. So what have we got available here in terms of like box cars and stuff like that. So it looks like we don't know. We do have, let's having a look. So I think we're using these right now. And they're capacity of six. And they're capacity of six as well for, they're actually a little bit cheaper. So we might actually use these. Once again, I know that these probably won't operate together. <laughs> we'll take it up to a capacity of 60. I wish you could drag these, by the way. And look at that. Nice. 
All right, that is going to be it for today. <laughs> I've been playing in-game for like, I think like 25 years or something like that, and we haven't really achieved a whole lot. We've built some infrastructure for our passenger network. We put a train in place. We then pulled it down because it was bleeding us dry. <laughs> but I think, I think we'll be able to do it next episode. I think we're looking pretty good. We can put in a passenger line and we can probably maybe um, look to put a second supply chain in place. Um, potentially we could take advantage of some of the food sort of resources we have around Birmingham or we could look at you know the oodles of um, steel resources we have sort of beyond over in this area here but I hope you've enjoyed this one once again bit of a bit of a stop and start episode but if you've enjoyed it please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video Links to my social media are in the description as well as my Discord. So jump on there if you want to join the conversation as well as buy me a coffee if you want to support the channel financially. But until next time, I'm Bob Dendry. This is Brit Rail. Thanks so much for watching and goodbye.